Hello and welcome to another budget and leggy video. Now we're going to be doing a review of this launch CRP429C which launch has very kindly sent me. So let's just have a quick look. Obviously you get the box, you get the scan tool and you get a nice pouch. Couple little things, the connection is at the bottom. Now initially, never really seen at the bottom before. Always kind of used to seeing at the top. And I didn't particularly like it, especially when you're, I'll show you in a minute, but when you're hanging out of a door um, and you're, you know, doing something, this, it's normally easy when the connection's at the top, but that's a very small kind of little, you know, problem, not really problem, but it's not, <laughs> I suppose you get used to it. Um, but let's just see what this does. It is, I've been messing with it for a long, uh, for a few weeks now, and I must admit, you know, it really is nice. Nice touch screen, nice big screen. It's got an onboard battery, you know, vi uh, battery monitor all the time, automatic detect. It does uh, diagnostic reports. You can print them out, which is really good. You know, you can graph stuff. Um, the lookup for the trouble codes, record and replay data back. Um, you can kind of pause this and it, you can go through, you know, the screen resolution and absolutely everything it does. This one also will reset oil lights, EPS, BMCs, DPFs, SRS, I mean, you know, airbags, um, sorry, ABS does the bleeding, in, um, injector programming, TPMS, you know, absolutely everything. I'm not going to be able to go through absolutely everything on this because it would just take way too long i will be doing a few videos on it this is just going to be like a, a a quick run through of the tool what it feels like feels really good quality you know nice like i said nice big touch screen you've got lots of buttons on here you can touch obviously on the screen but you can also use the buttons like there's a home button which is really handy there's your automatic vin now you can set this to as soon as you plug it in it'll do an automatic uh, VIN or you can just press the button you press the button go straight to the ready monitors again depend on what country you're in um, you know we don't really need the the ready monitors here you know for our test or anything like that or to see which ones pass for test because our test doesn't work that way over here in Ireland um, we also which is really really handy we have a screenshot button which I really do like you can connect it to the internet so if you get a code you can search it up on the internet now you have to do be very careful when you search a code online just because it's the same fault or code as what you've got doesn't mean it's the same problem you can have 10 cars identical cars with the same fault code and there can be 10 different issues so just be aware of that but it's again it's a nice handy feature that you can do that um so what we're going to do is we're going to hook this up to a 2008 Audi A6 and just run through some of the stuff this bad boy can do. Right, as soon as you plug it in, I just missed the beginning of it, but as soon as you plug it in, it'll start doing an automatic um, scan. You can see the battery monitor on the top, which is really handy. What I really do like about it, it doesn't work for every single vehicle, but as you can see, um, it says 2008 Audi A6, which is obviously correct. Now what I need to do is just get this in a better position so I can hold the camera. Okay, so we're just going to press OK. And what it'll do, it'll do its kind of little health check, which is really handy. And it will save that. So once you do the scan, it will actually save it so you have it for future reference, which is really handy. And obviously it'll go through and it'll tell you which ones has uh, faults, which ones don't, and it'll give you a summary at the bottom. But what it also does, which I really, really like, it gives you the mileage of the car. So you can compare the actual mileage to the car, which is really uh, handy. Now that's in kilometers and the car is in miles. Um, but if you come up to a car and someone's maybe done something dodgy with it, you've got the information there, which is really handy. So as we can see, we go up to it and we do have a couple of problems. Uh, these could be old problems we're not the car doesn't have any lights on at the minute but i'm just going to go through everything but what i do really like is so let's just go into our um oh i already clicked it what did i click there just go out of that just going to go into my 
It's just so difficult to be one-handed. <laughs> Let's go enter into our brakes. Now, what I like about it is, here we go, we've got our information here. So, we've actually got our part number of our module. Some modules in the cars are absolutely buried, and to try and get the module number can be a nightmare, because you have to do a lot of stripping before you can find it. With this, you click onto it, boom, there it is. There's the, there's the part number, so if you're getting a second-hand part, uh, second part or a new part, you can give them the part number, which is absolutely brilliant. You go into it, obviously we can read, um, oh no, not clear. Let's read, so difficult to do this looking through the camera. And as you can see, we've got a problem. Now we can do a, a, a code search. I think I'm connected to my, and as you can see, this is what's really, I, I like about it. Now you do have to be careful, but at least it gives you an idea. Don't necessarily go off what it says, because like I said, you could have the same car with loads of different problems, but it gives you videos, you know, it just gives you ideas of maybe where to go, which is what I really like. But you have to be careful of this information. Don't, you know, just go on this information. But if you're unsure, it's a nice little, um, little thing to go off. And we can go into our um, data stream. Again, you can go by channel or go by list, depending what you're used to. And by channel, as you can see, we've got, you know, 002, 0023. These are all our channels, depending on what software you're actually used to. Um, and what we can do is we can go to... Do we have a brake switch problem? Um, let's see what information we've got here as regards that. Let's just click on that for the minute. And there we go, our clutch pedal travel. And as we press the clutch down, as you can see, we've got our live data. So we can see that that clutch pedal is now working. That could have just been an old fault, because like I said, there is no fault code in it now. But with something like that, look how quick and easy it is with live data, can really, you know, get you in the right direction. Now you do have to be very, very careful. As you can see, our battery is a bit low. So you don't want to be doing too much testing with your battery low because you can be getting false readings, but automatic at the top, it shows us our battery reading, which is absolutely brilliant. So we might want to just start the car to get it up and going. As we can see, very quickly, it's responded. It's now 13.6 volts. We've now got the car started and it does say we're under diagnostic. So again, we won't worry about that. But again, the battery monitor being right there in front of your face all the time is absolutely fantastic. Um, let's just, and this is our module information here. This is what we had before, but you can go into all the modules and actually get all that information through there. Then down here, rather than going through all the menu systems, we can just go straight to home. If you are unsure as well, and you want to take a screenshot, for example, just come down here, press that. You'll hear it, it's took a screenshot. So if you want to take a screenshot of live data or you know all the error codes or whatever the case may be, you just press the button down there and boom, it's done. We can just go home and we can see more of the actual um, interface here. So we, that's, that's diagnostics we went into. Oh, of course, we're gonna to have to go out of this completely. So let's just go out of this completely. Are you sure you want to quit? Yes. Let's go back out. Let's go back in there. Now, we can do an auto detect, as you can see, if my camera decides to stop messing around with the focus, or you can go through it, because again, depending on the car, depending on the age of the car, it might not do it. So you can actually go through each individual car here and actually get the right one in the end, which is handy as well. But on this particular case, the automatic uh, reader works. And we've got OBD2 data here. So again, we can go into that and that will automatically do it, depending on uh, which system you actually want to run through. And there we can see, so we just go okay, there's no fault codes on at the minute and we can read, you know, live data freeze frame. Again, oh, I keep pressing the wrong one on the camera. Uh, freeze frame. 
Okay, we got no freeze frame data because we've got no, but that is really good freeze frame data. That can tell you an awful lot and where to go with the actual fault codes. We can read fault codes, we can erase fault codes, onboard monitoring, um, oh, press it. live data. Again, we can go through, let's just pick a couple of these engine RPM, coolant temperature sensor. Let's just go, oh, let's get a few more air intake. Uh, now, and we can go there. We can see the live readings, which is really good. If you want to uh, graph it, then you can just press. Oh, that's it. Press that, and that happens. Um, let me get this set up again, and then we'll continue. Back, my stupid phone decided to uh, just be stupid. Also, what I like about this is now ignition. I turned my ignition off, but once I turn it back on again, as you will see, we don't lose the data. Some scan tools, once you turn the ignition off, like I'm about to now, and switch it back on again, it 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 cuts down because there's no internal battery in it, and you have to start it all over again, which is really frustrating. This doesn't do that, as you can see. So I'll start it again, and we don't lose our data pids or absolutely anything that's what i really really do like about it it's really handy and it's really quite fast now we've only got a few data pids here but let's just if i want to combine some just to get our graphs and this is going to slide off again uh, um and we'll just say okay so awkward <laughs> Now, as you can see, there's our grass, and as you can see how quickly it reacts. Now, again, we've only got a few data pids up, which is good. Um, you know, if you've got the more data pids you have up, the slower it reacts. But you can see the reaction is is really quick, which is really nice. And again, if you're monitoring, you know, ABS sensors, airflow, map sensors, anything like that, you know, turbo uh, sensors, and you're driving down the road and there's a dropout, um, that's where a graph can really come in especially like turbo sensors and stuff if you've got um you know uh, uh, an actual uh, rate and then your rate and you see if they're actually match and stuff like that you can see if they drop out under boost over boost and you can do all that from the graphs which is really really handy so that's our data stream on the obd2 side of things so my phone is just yeah being a phone into diagnostics and we can go to history and you can see all the cars you've scanned before you can quickly access them you know so if the car has come in six months later and the customer says for example well that code wasn't there when i gave it to you first and all this sort of stuff you can actually go back you can see the codes and stuff and you can say to the person well you know actually it was you know which is really handy uh we won't need to do it but that's what you can do so let's just go back out of here just have to pause that go back out special functions and here we go this is this is the stuff we can and can't do depending on the car you know reset airbags and stuff like that but again i'll go through you know all this in a few more videos because to do it all in one video is you know very difficult um i just want to get back to the interface so you can see let's just go back out of here now we've got our update and again it's as simple as that you just press in updates if there's any updates we've got our settings here depending where you are in the world if you want metric or imperial if you want automatic um detection on your sound your network time and dates you know all that um even here where it says about you can actually no not about um is it it is about, I think, um, version. And then you can even check for, you know, the version update to make sure it's up to date and stuff like that just by pressing update. And if there's an update for it, you can get it. Um, and we've got this uh, gear plus, which there is going to be uh, features coming shortly to it. But then we can go to reset. And again, depending on your car, as you can see, we've got brake reset, you know, for our brake switch. And now this car um, does have the stupid brake button. 
Um, so when you need to do pads and stuff, you need to be able to um, set it. So we just go to Audi again, ignition on, yes. Yes. And we've got parking brake. It just tells us, so we can read the parking brake. We can open the rear calibers, we can close the rear calibers, we can do a test. So um, automatic um, brake pad replacement. So again, some cars, you have to actually tell it um, how thick the brake pads are when they're going in. I, I, I won't go into this too much because the car is running and we don't need to. But again, depending on some cars, you have to tell it how thick the brake pads are. You have to release the handbrake cables or release the motors. You know, this will do all that for you, um, which is really handy. Also, we'll go out there. We've got, you know, SI, SI, <laughs> SAS reset. We've got bleeding battery reset. Uh, TPMS reset, DPF regen, gear learning, inject, absolutely, you know, there's just loads and loads and loads of stuff this will do, which I just cannot go through in all one video. I will be using this a lot more in my diagnostic, diagnostic video, so you will be seeing this tool. Um, I've done another video which you should have checked out first that was just a quick one on a Ford and that's the bad boy there so that's the launch CRP 429C like I said we'll be doing lots more videos so look hope it helps please like share comment and subscribe don't forget links up here links down below to my Facebook Patreon and all that but most importantly don't forget get your hands dirty see you for the next one sorted